Hey folks, Mike Stofferton. I wanted to go over a couple of things with you about our new layout. Um, as you know, in the spring of 2020, we did change our store layout so that our sequences had more models for people to map to. Uh, we did have a Whoville house that we used uh, for people to map from. And uh, we added a significant number of new models. Uh, for those of you that are not completely familiar with it, this is our new layout. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of, of new models, different things out there. Uh, total count is around 230 different uh, new models for you to use. Anyway, uh, a couple of things that I wanted to show you. When you download your zip file uh, from our store, uh, you're going to get some PDFs. The first thing that I want you to look at when you get that PDF, of course, is the README First file. Now, the README First file gives you a nice overview of all the things that uh, you need to know. One of the things that's real important is save your download email. Uh, the reason why is if you uh, have a, a hard drive crash or you change computers and you need to download our sequence again, that uh, download file will be good for I think the last count I had is it had it at seven years or something like that. So in other words, uh, for, for most people, that's about the, the length that they'll keep their display before significantly changing it. Uh, but anyway, so save that download email and you can use it again and again and again. And as we update our layout, you'll be able to get those updates automatically without paying anything just by using your download email. All right, uh, there's... Uh, couple of things that we go over. Uh, first off, you know, right here, getting the sequence on your display tells you how to prepare the sequence for mapping, uh, how to familiarize yourself with the various groups and models that we have, uh, that sort of thing. Now, in your download, you also have this right here. As I said, there are 230 different uh, models on our layout. And so what I've done here is just kind of label them by name. Uh, so you can go in and, and at least figure out what I called something. I tried to be logical about it, but uh, that doesn't always work. Uh, my logic may be different than yours, uh, may be different than, than anybody's. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so you know what I named things, and that makes it a little easier. Okay, this is what he's talking about when, when I see this name. So you've got that, and it's something that you can reference. The other thing that I provided with you, and we've really changed the way that we map things, or that you're going to map things. With this many models, we needed another layer of organization. And what this layer of organization does is it gives you kind of a, a way to look at all this and make some sense of it. Uh, also in your, in your download, there's this right here, what I call the next level mapping. What I've done is instead of just using the names uh, of the various items, I've also included numbers. Now by numbering every group, every model, and every submodel that shows up, by numbering it, what it does is it gives me the ability to determine where it shows up on the import screen. Now, the reason why that's important is the way that I've got these structured. All right, first off, everything is going to be starting with 0, 1. Okay, there's three levels. Uh, the level 1, uh, 0, 1 items are things that affect the entire display. Uh, for example, it'll be all snowflakes, all mini trees, all stars, uh, all the horizontals, all the verticals, windows, the yard outline. Things like that. It's the, the entire display uh, I've categorized as, as zero one. Now the zero two model groups are groups that are subgroups of the whole display. For example, I've got uh, s uh, snowflakes on the roof, I've got snowflakes on the garage, I've got snowflakes on the uh, right side of the yard. Well, that kind of breaks it out. In each area, you'll see uh, there's there's those snowflakes that uh, it's broken out in level two. In level three, we have our individual models. These are things that uh, when I sequence, I sequence 
at the, the model level. These are big things like mega trees, uh, the, um, the peace stakes that are there, uh, the rosa wreath, the PPD wreath, um, the large snowflake on the roof, the window wreath, the poinsettia wreath, all those things are broken out. That's what, those are the level three individual models. Let me show you what this looks like when you actually import it. Import it. Uh, let me get this off the screen here. I'm going to import some effects. Okay, this is the import screen. Now on this right side is what you will see when you import one of our sequences that have been up, that's been updated. On the left side, this will be yours. Now, these are identical for me because I'm importing into the same thing. But uh, when you're importing, one of the things I want to point out, make sure that you click the timing tracks up here. The reason why that's important is because if I use the uh, VU meter on something, it's going to reference a timing track. So you want to make sure that you bring all these timing tracks in. I spent a lot of time on timing tracks because I use them for uh, things like a rhythm, uh, the bass, uh, the, you know, the beats that, uh, that the uh, Queen Mary Vamp uh, plugins put in. Those are all there for you. Make sure that you import them. Now on the right side here, you'll start seeing that everything is numbered. It starts at uh, 0.1.0. And you'll see here that I identify if it's a group, it's GRP. If it's a model, it's MOD. If it's a submodel, it's SUB. Um, and then it'll have the name out to the side. And again, those names are going to correspond with what you see here. In addition, you'll notice. Okay, when I zoom in here, on the diagram, I've given you the name of the model, and I'll also give you the number that corresponds with it. So when you go in and you look at it, all that uh, is synchronized, so to speak, and it all works together. All right, so the other thing I've done is you'll notice here that, that full groups or models are all capitalized. I did that because when you have a lot of submodels, we want them to stand out a little bit. So on the submodels, you'll see here, I made those upper and lower case. In addition, on a submodel, I went ahead and I indented another five or six spaces so that when you're going through this, the main models jump out at you real quick. In addition, you know because of the numbering what type of group it is. For example, you know that everything that's 0, 1 uh, through, uh, you know, 0, 1, 1 through 0, uh, 1, 13 affects the entire display. So if you have a real simple display, what you probably would like to do is go through and just pull in the models from uh, 0, 1, and then kind of pick and choose from 0, 2 what you've got and then anything that you have from uh, the 0, 3 group, the individual groups uh, that are there. Uh, but again, the reason why I did that is to give it some structure so that when you see all these potential things that you can pull from, um, it makes some sense to you. Now to help you figure out exactly what you'd like to do, I also provide in the download a uh, mapping worksheet. This mapping worksheet, again, corresponds by number and the way things are set up. Now, you'll notice that on the worksheet, some of them are highlighted out, so to speak, these, uh, these yellow ones. The reason why I do that is because these are individual models. Now, what I try to do to make your mapping a little bit easier is I try to, as much as possible, to sequence at the group level so that when you import something, you're not having to import individual models. Uh, in other words, you can bring in all your mini trees at one time, you can bring in all your snowflakes at one time, and it just makes mapping a sequence so much easier. All right, so anything that you see in yellow on that sheet 
is something that I'm probably not going to sequence to. Um, now, these I, I included them because every once in a while uh, you'll have some bells ringing, you'll have something that uh, you know you just really need to point to an individual model. Doesn't happen very often, but I did include those things in there in the mapping worksheet just in case um, it does appear that way and uh, you need to figure out where to map something from. All right, so, uh, you know, the first first column, you know, is whether or not this uh, model is actually used. Now, there's lots of models there, uh, and I don't necessarily use every model in every sequence, so a model might not be there at all. Um, but if, uh, if it is, you can go ahead, look at uh, the layout when you, when you prep the sequence that you downloaded when you prep it for importing. Uh, you're actually just rendering what uh, our display is. Uh, so you can go in and actually look uh, when you go to the sequencing tab, you can go in and look and see uh, which groups or subgroups are actually mapped to. So you can figure that out or you can just figure it out by watching the sequence. And then over here on the far right is where your display element, your model goes. And uh, you don't have to use this mapping worksheet, but it certainly is helpful. Maybe if this is a new process for you and this is the first time you've mapped it, you can go through and figure out exactly where you want to map things to. Now it brings up a point that uh, I, I don't know a lot of people have thought about this, but one of the things that when I sequence, you'll notice that a lot of times I have a lot of the things going. And the reason why I do that is because there's lots of different people out there that have different sequence uh, displays. Everybody's display is different. I don't know what you have in your display. I don't know what the next person has in their display. So what I try to do is I try to sequence to every display model, uh, every group, as much as I can where it still looks good. Uh, but I try to do that so that when you are mapping to your display, there's something for you to map from in our display. So it's kind of an overproduction. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes, yeah, it might look a little better if everything wasn't on all the time. But the reason why I do that is so that people who are mapping to their house have something to choose from. Um, you know, in other words, if you've got spiral trees, uh, yeah, I'm going to sequence as much as I can to, logically to those spiral trees so that you have something to pull from and put on your display. So to an extent, when we do something, we kind of overproduce when we're doing these sequences for people to purchase, uh, download, and map from. All right, so those that's kind of a, a, a summary, an overview of what I call next level mar uh, mapping. Call it next level mapping because basically what you're doing is you are going from one level to the next. And by organizing things this way, it makes it a little easier for you to get your head around uh, the 230 different models that we uh, use when we're creating a sequence. So you start with level one, pick everything that applies from there, Go to level two, pick and choose what you have from there, and then go to level three and pick and choose from there. Makes mapping a whole lot easier when you have a large number of models to choose from. Uh, gives it some structure and hopefully uh, makes it something a little more meaningful for you when you see that big long list of all the models on the right side or again side when you go to import a sequence. That's all I have to talk to you about, about uh, you know, downloading and uh, importing our sequences. Uh, of course, always open to suggestions. Uh, one of the things that we did this year is we, before, when we changed the format, uh, about 20 people helped us, provided feedback, gave us great information, and that information was kind of put into uh, this new methodology we have for the mapping. Uh, the next level mapping also helped with some naming conventions and things like that that 
hopefully will make it uh, just a lot easier for you to use, uh, a lot more user friendly, if you if you will, uh, when you map our sequences. All right, thank you very much. Uh, happy lighting, and uh, I look forward to helping you out with any of the sequences that you get from us. Thanks again.